Jesus, our offering, should a child of God be asked to give an offering? Why are we asked to give an offering? Mm -hmm. Knowing fully well, Jesus is our offering. So um, we're going to be looking at how offering started. Yeah, the 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 the, the Bible told us in um, um, Exodus when the Lord God asked the children of Israel to bring offering to Him to offer to God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah! He said, bring me. Tell the children of Israel. Is the Lord God? He said to Moses, he said, "Tell the children of Israel to bring me an offering." Mm -hmm. And the reason for that offering was clearly stated mm -hmm. there why he was asking for that offering and he also said the people who are willing should bring take from the people who are willing take an offering for the lord from the people who are willing to give which means if you're not willing to give no hard feelings right no hard feelings but you have to be willing for that offering to be received offering how did it now become our offering hallelujah should we read where uh it talks about bringing an offering to the lord first Let's just, yeah but let's, before we before we get there there's something mm -hmm. that we need to put into perspective because you know we 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 need to realize what we're actually doing mm -hmm. in the kingdom of god See? yes the kingdom of god isn't our property it belongs to god god has the, the ultimate preeminence mm. is the ruler, he's a sovereign. Yeah. Okay? We've been brought into it. Okay? And we gain passage to the kingdom of God because of what Christ has accomplished. Mm -hmm. okay? So it says that no man comes to the Father except yes, by, by me. Okay? He who has a son has a father. Mm -hmm. okay? So as we have said and reiterated this point, uh, numerous times, but the whole canon of scriptures we have, as the counsel of God has been revealed to, to us through mm -hmm. the word of God that we have right now in the Bible that we read, that we've had a possession of for centuries, is all about Christ Jesus. Amen. Okay. And so I'm just going to read a couple of scriptures mm -hmm. just to make that that point, you know, um, you know, get get to. To, to our spirit even 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 deeply yeah. okay? because the evidence is important again okay? if you look at the book of the gospel of john john Was it born in Australia? Mm. Okay, so from thirty one, so if if by if I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. Mm. There is another who bears witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesses of me is true. 33. You have sent John, and he has borne witness to the truth. Yet I do not receive testimony from man, but I say these things that you may be saved. It was the burning and shining lamp, and you were willing for a time to rejoice in his light. But I have a greater witness than John's, for the works which the Father has given me to finish... Okay? The very works that I do bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. And the Father himself who sent me has testified of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his form, but you do not, you do not have his word abiding in you. Because whom he sent, him you do not believe. 39. You search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. Mm. And these are they which testify of me. Mm. So Christ Jesus the Lord is saying here, the scriptures, because at the time, what we understand as the New Testament today, 
so from the, 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 the Gospel of Matthew to the book of Revelation, was not written yet. So the only scripture they had as a council of being, uh, uh, had been, which had been revealed was from what Moses had written from the book of Genesis all the way through and what uh, uh, Joshua had written. And then all the other books that the prophet had also contributed uh, as part of their, 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 their calling up to the book of Malachi. That's all the scriptures that was available to reveal the council of the Lord in part. So Christ Jesus came for the other aspect of it to be revealed or to be com uh, uh, com completed, to be given a full version, a full form, hence the introduction of the new covenant, which subsumes the old covenant and exemplifies the, 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 the accomplishment of, the, of God's purpose through Christ Jesus in all, in, in, in all aspects. Okay? Mm -hmm. So this is what those who are saying. They say the scriptures testify of me. So, so you can't bypass me mm -hmm. and go into the scriptures. Because mm -hmm. what on earth are you doing if you, you take that approach? They say, I am the scripture. I am the word of God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was, was God. God. And the word that word became flesh. It's talking and about Christ Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we have seen his light. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is quite important for us to, to establish that the whole counsel of God in written text talks about one person, Christ Jesus. He is the main subject yeah? mm. and we are the main object because it is for us. Mm. But the emphasis, the attention is on Christ Jesus. Mm. And this is what we have admonished um, 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 the people of God, we've admonished ourselves over time by emphasizing on the fact that you cannot discuss or deliberate on any subject of interest within the, the, the understanding we have of the Word of God without connecting that subject to Christ Jesus. Because otherwise, if you do not do that, mm. you'll be teaching or preaching or prophesying in error because mm. it can't be apart from Christ Jesus because he says all scriptures are about him yeah just one more and then we'll and Pastor Pesham will, conti will, will, will yeah. continue with, with, with the leading uh, in in the book of Luke, Luke. chapter 24 Is one of the, the late verses. When the Lord Jesus Christ encamped, met two of his disciples, okay, on the way when after resurrection, okay. So if we start from um, Because he had a quite a long conversation with them. So from, from verse 13, okay, the story starts from there. Okay. So now behold, two of them were traveling that same day to a village called Imos, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. Quite interesting, you know, the distance of seven miles from Jerusalem. And that is deliberate. It's not a coincidence. The Lord, you know, used that, that, that particular path. Because okay. he walked on that himself. Yeah. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. 15. So it was while they, they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained so that they did not know him. Okay, the Lord hid himself from them for a while because he wanted to establish exactly the, the, that, the, the nature of that interaction. 17. And he said to them, what kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk and are sad. 18. Then the one whose name was Cleopas answered and said to him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? And have you not known the things which have happened, uh, have, uh, which happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? So they said to him, The things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet 
mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to, to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all this, today is the third day since these things happened. Yes, and certain women of our company who arrived at the tomb early astonished us. When they did not find his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. And certain of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. 25. Then he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken, ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? 27. This is now the key thing, the key scripture, the key verse that we want God's people to add to the list of evidence about Christ Jesus being the preeminent uh, uh, character across the scriptures. And beginning at Moses, I mean, book of Genesis, and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Christ Jesus was teaching Cleopas and his other disciples because he had not consolidated the understanding of the fulfillment of the purposes of God for Christ and in Christ. So it's okay. I'm going to give you a teaching about me. Hence, the doctrine of Christ. Yeah. So it says, let's start from the beginning. So it started from the book of Genesis up to the book of Malachi to explain to them, to expound to them what was written about him that should happen. Yeah. And in 28, then they drew near to the village where they were going and he indicated that he would have gone for, uh, further, but they constrained him saying, abide with us for it is toward evening and the day is far spent, and he went in to stay with them. See? This is one thing that the Lord will always do. If a child of his asks to spend time with him, the Lord does not turn the invitation down. He will never do that. So be reassured, whenever you call on the name of the Lord, the Lord answers promptly, because he's not far from you. You live in him, he lives in you. You move in him, he moves in you. Your body is his temple. Yeah? But 27 is the evidence we provide him. Yeah? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Just as we read initially in, 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 book of, in the Gospel of John, chapter 5, verse 39 as well, the key scripture there will say that. He said, you search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, but they are the ones that speak of me. It's exactly what he was doing here, going to the scriptures, because the scriptures speak of Christ Jesus. So you must find Christ Jesus in every single chapter, in every single verse that you read. What does that mean? It means that there are scriptures that are directly speaking about Christ Jesus, what he's going to accomplish. And the scriptures that are indirectly or are implicit because they hold evidence to other aspects of human life, human existence, which fundamentally connects to the main purpose or mission that Christ Jesus came to, to, to do. He came to save mankind. But we also need to know the context in which mankind was living so that we understand what Christ has done for us in knowing where we were, what we were doing that was not pleasing to God. Mm. So all the scriptures are about Christ Jesus because he's the main subject. But they are written for us because we are the main object. The Lord God was concerned about us 
for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. Mm-hmm. Amen. So that's the, the main foundation. Christ Jesus is that foundation. Amen. So whoever builds that foundation must, must ensure that they take care what they are building on earth. So you can't build lies on Christ Jesus. You can't build deceit on Christ Jesus. Mm-hmm. You can't build deception on Christ Jesus. You can't build, you know, a, a, a stealing and oh, and then and this this destruction and you know on Christ Jesus because you need to be led by the Spirit of God, by the mighty Holy Spirit, in order to build upon that foundation so that whatever is being built will last because it pertains to life, it pertains to eternal life, it pertains to growth and development. That the works that have been given to one who has been given uh, or has been uh, assigned to, to that doctrine of Christ and understanding the new covenant and their position in that new covenant you know, may be fruitful because except you receive the right education from the Holy Spirit in understanding the doctrine of Christ it is difficult or nearly impossible for you to achieve what God has placed in your hands to mm-hmm. achieve in glorifying the name of Jesus because there are works that have been placed in your hands for you to demonstrate the power of the name of Jesus is given to every believer. So the Lord Jesus said, these signs are followed them that believe. believe. Meaning that you are the one producing the signs, as the signs mm-hmm. following you, because you are producing them. Mm-hmm. So he says, go, raise the dead, heal the sick, you know, open the, blind, the, the eyes of the blind, cause the mute to speak, the deaf to, 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 to hear. Mm-hmm. Those words have been given to every single believer. You have the name of Jesus. You use his name, the Holy Spirit backs that up. Mm-hmm. That's how he testifies of him. That's, that's how he bears witness of him. By the works. And this is what we are doing. Mm-hmm. We mentioned about the offerings. But you can see, brother, as we've been saying before, you know, we can't be looking at aspects of the will of God away from Christ Jesus. Mm-hmm. It is detrimental. Mm-hmm. Because the question is, what are we doing then? If we put Christ Jesus aside, what are we involved in? Destruction, death, hell, basically. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is not present, is hell. Mm. Amen. Amen. So that brings us to God's internal purpose. Mm. So the real purpose that God made man, the real purpose that Jesus came to die, that made him, that made him uh, himself the offering for us. Amen. Yeah, is bring us to God's internal purpose, the mm. reason for for this to happen. Amen. 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 So before the Lord Jesus Christ came, being that man had fallen, man was in sin mm. and had fallen. Remember what happened in the Garden of Eden. So man fell. Man became separated from God. Mm. Being separated from, from God, man couldn't have that fellowship that he could have been able to have with God. He couldn't have that fellowship with God anymore because they were far away from God. So God's internal purpose was for man to be reconciled back to himself. Mm. And being that man is in sin, and God cannot behold sin. Sin cannot dwell in the presence of God. Otherwise, the sinner will be consumed. So the Lord God find a way to bridge the gap so that man and God can still have fellowship. Amen. So the way for that to happen, remember, the Bible says that the Lamb of God was slain before the foundation of the earth. So everything that is happening in the Bible is playing out what had already taken place. But if God just came and said, okay, man, Jesus come die, 
man wouldn't understand the mm. impact. They wouldn't understand what has happened. Mm. But the Lord God had to make it play out. You see, you're insane. There's no way you couldn't come next to God. Mm. Remember the children of Israel in, mm. in um, the, where is that? Where they couldn't come close to God, he said. The mountain. Mount yeah, Sinai. Mount Sinai. Mm. And the Lord wanted them all to come. He said, come, come, purify yourself, but come. Mm. And they said, no, 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 no. They tried, but it turned in the, the voice of God. They couldn't stand it. Mm. Even God, though the Lord has invited them, he said, purify yourself, then come. They couldn't stand it. They said, no, Moses, you go. Represent us. Mm. You see? But when Jesus came and died, the God's internal purpose for man to be reconciled to him, when that happened because of the blood of Jesus Christ that was sacrificed for man, the pure blood mm. without blemish was sacrificed for man. So man now is able to come to God. Is able now to stand before God. You are able now mm. to talk to God. Amen. You wouldn't be able to do that before. You'll be consumed. Mm. So God's internal purpose is to have fellowship with man. And because man was already in sin, that, that, that couldn't happen. So the Lord God instituted mm. where man will be purified bringing an offering to him mm. so there was the introduction of different offerings mm. they have the sin offering the grain offering uh the peace offering mm. the guilt offering they were different offerings so when this is offered when someone thinks they've sinned and they want to uh come to god they will give the offering mm. so they are cleansed but it was temporary mm. because man couldn't be righteous. Mm. For righteousness to come was for the Lord Jesus Christ to not die mm. on the cross. The, 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 the sin of man, the guilt of man, mm. all with the wrath of God will be placed on him. Mm. He will take it all in. And after that, man will be reconciled to God. Mm. So now when we come through the name of Jesus, mm. we come and we believe in the works. Mm. You, see, you see the scripture that Apostle Joseph read initially said, the works that I've come to do, to, to finish, mm. to finish, to accomplish. Mm. Say those words they speak mm. and they are still speaking because you are in salvation. Amen. I am in salvation. The works mm -hmm. are speaking. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So um we are looking at offering Amen. and we're asking, should a child of God be asked to give an offering? An offering. Mm. So that's why we were going back to God's internal purpose. So there's nothing. We don't just do, like Apostle Joseph mentioned at the start, we don't just do things because on our own hmm. or because this is in the Bible, we can cover something from there and just do things along that line. Hmm. No. God has an internal purpose why those things were done. Hmm. When he said to the children of Israel, he said, tell, it's, it told Moses, he said, tell them to bring me an offering. The reason was to build a tabernacle. Mm -hmm. Why? That tabernacle, his presence will be there. Amen. Mm -hmm. So the children of God, when they come there, they will have fellowship with God. So it's all because of fellowship. Mm -hmm. God's internal purpose. Mm -hmm. So he said, bring, bring me this. And he said, he wants the temple to be built according to the pattern. Mm -hmm that was shown to him. So the pattern that it was in heaven, so he wanted to be built. And the material, mm. he gave specific material, specification of everything Amen. that has to be done. Amen. It's not like we're building today. People are building, they say that this is a temple, they were building the house of God. Amen. No, that was because man was in sin, and man couldn't, the God, today, by God's grace, 
the, the Holy Spirit was in us. Yes. Mm. The, uh, God is in us. We are now His temple. temple. Mm. He has built us up. We are being built up by the word of God. Amen. It's not like an external temple. We don't go for an external temple. Mm. We're not trying to build an external temple. The temple. We are now the temple of God. Why? What Jesus did. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, Apostle Joseph, uh, the Lord God's internal purpose mm. was for Jesus to come to die. Mm. So, this Jesus Christ being our offering today, mm. Mm. how do you explain that yeah. to someone? Amen. I mean, you've just given an incredible expose there, and that was one of the best imagine of the gospel. I've heard in, in a very long time, I must admit, not just because you're my wife, but, you know, you're a servant of God as well. Amen. You know, so this is what we got to really, to really understand. You see, the things that have been given unto us, we given freely to us Amen. to enjoy. But a wise man once said, anything that comes to you free, it mm. means that somebody else has paid for it. Mm. Salvation is free because we received it mm. effortlessly without having to do anything. Because Christ accomplished the works. He finished the works. Okay? So, one of the ways that the scriptures elaborate to us mm. the plan of God in connection to God's eternal purpose was how the unfolding of Christ's advent you know, took place. Mm. So the Lord started the beginning mm. by placing a timeline. Mm. And across the timeline, he introduced different covenants. He spoke to different people mm. and placed them strategically where they ought to be to contribute our part Amen. to that plan. Yeah. Adam was the, the first man. Mm. He failed us. He failed all mankind. Yeah. Because of that, the first Adam, all of us became sinners mm -hmm. because we inherited the sinful gene that had developed in his system mm. because he disobeyed the word of God as a mm. consequence. So the Lord started calling men after that mm. because there was a challenge now in human existence yeah. which was lack of righteousness mm. and sinfulness being on the rise yeah. Yeah. sin always continues to abound that's what sin does mm -hmm. you know that's what just compared sin to the leaven because leaven as yeast has that potential yeah. growing so yeah. sin has the same potential it doesn't diminish mm. sin does ever diminish it only grows. Yeah. The only thing that combats sin is the grace of God. Amen. So where sin abounds, grace abounds much more. more. Yeah. So the grace of God is much more rapid in increasing compared to sin. Yeah, but sin doesn't diminish at all. It just increases. Yeah. So the Lord God called different men. So Noah preached the gospel. Mm -hmm. Noah's turn had passed. He finished his work, mm -hmm. but it was not good enough. Yeah. To save all mankind. Mm. Yeah. And the Lord waited and waited and waited and waited and waited until he called Abraham. Mm. And with Abraham, he said, I'll make you a father of many nations. Mm. He enters Abraham into a covenant. We know as the Abraham covenant, which has not been abolished because the Abraham covenant is essentially based on Christ Jesus. Mm. Because the Bible says Abraham believed and it was counted to him for oh, well, righteousness. Nice. That righteousness that comes by faith or being justified by faith only comes through faith in Christ Jesus. Okay? So the Lord Jesus Christ makes this comment with statements that Abraham sought to see, see my days. Day. Okay? Hallelujah. Yeah. And he met Abraham, Melchizedek. Mm, glory yeah. to God. Yeah. So in your seed, that seed is Christ Jesus. Mm. Okay? So we have the Abraham covenant, which had one uh, a particular element mm. of um, um, one binding or uh, element, which was circumcision in the flesh. But circumcision, it is inherent to God's purpose mm. in the new covenant because one needs to be circumcised. Instead of the, 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 the first skin of the male organ, it is now circumcision of the heart. Okay? But Abraham, as Paul remarks, that Abraham was first circumcised in this heart because mm. when he believed, it was not yet circumcised in the flesh. So you can see that circumcision in the heart is what matters the most. Okay. So we move from Abraham and the Lord Jesus, the Lord, the Lord God, the Lord Jesus, you know, is part of this plan, the Son of God and the Son of Man. Okay. 
The children of God are now gone into captivity as the Lord had warned Abraham, his servant, was going to happen. 400 years later, the Lord comes down to save them. By the hand of Moses, supported by his brother, uh, older brother Aaron, and uh, oh, um, um, elder sister Miriam. The entire family, they all call them three. The one that the Bible says, I sought for a man. Man, yeah. He keep looking. Yeah. I sought for a man. There was a man, a man good enough. We've had the Daniels afterwards. We've had the, you know, the Ezekiel, the Jeremiah, you know, the Nathan, great men of God, the, the Zechariah, you know, Nehum, you know, Obadiah, all these men the Lord used. Uh, Jonah, Joel, you know, they, they contributed quite a lot, Malachi, because of what? Because of the plan of God. But it was all leading to Christ Jesus. So after the Abraham covenant was introduced, which remains still to this, this day, because that is a covenant based on Christ Jesus, that all that believe in Christ are attached to, to, to Abraham, because the Lord gave him that uh, uh, mission, that uh, 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 obligation to, to, to fulfill to be a father of many nations. So the whole earth will be blessed through you or by you. Indeed, the whole earth will be blessed because of the seed of Abraham. Because Christ Jesus is 14 generations, three times, 14 generations down the line from Abraham. Yeah. So now we have the, the, the covenant that the Lord introduces to the, to the children of Israel now. He had one with Abraham for status or being part of the kingdom of God. And for you to have that claim, you need to abide by that covenant by being circumcised. That's why the circumcision of the flesh has been a mark, you know, throughout the, the history of, uh, uh, of Israel as, as, as the people of God. Okay? And then David asked, who is this and circumcised Philistine? Because he knew what he was referring to. Mm. Okay, so I have a higher status because I am one of I belong to Abraham. And not only that, I have made my claim to that covenant by obeying, by being circumcised in, in the flesh. So the Lord introduces now the old covenant, which was a copy of the new. Mm. Under that old covenant, it is where we have more of the counsel of the Lord revealed. Under that, we have the historical content of when the Lord God started with mankind. At the hands of Moses, the Lord gave Moses all the information that we have to die in the book of Genesis, Exodus, we've got Leviticus, we've got Numbers, Deuteronomy. So this is where we find the different offerings and what are those offerings what are they saying to us those offerings are relating to what the lord god requires to be pleased to be pacified to be befriended for him to offer, offer forgiveness to offer mercy so it made it, it gave that way that passage that escape from judgment from is rough because if one did not present a sin offering, one's sins were not forgiven. If one did not present a burnt offering, one did not present any worship to God because one did not have any connection to God. If one did not present a peace offering, one would have been at war with God. So God was not appeased by whatever you did. So the institution of the offerings were indicative of how the Lord God required to be pleased. So you offer that. He tells you what he wants. And all the offerings, there was no money involved. The Lord did not ask money to be burnt on the altar. Hallelujah. Amen. Should we just read? Um, so at least we can mm -hmm. see it out. Um, the Exodus, isn't it? Yes. Exodus 25. So we can see definitely about the offering. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Okay. He says, um, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel that they may bring me an offering. So is the Lord requesting. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. From everyone who gives it willingly with his heart, you shall take my offering. Mm. My offering. Mm. And this is the offering which you shall take from them. Mm. Gold, silver, mm -hmm. bronze, mm. blue, purple, and scarlet thread, fine linen, and goat's head, ram skin, mm. dyed red, mm. badger skin, mm -hmm. and acacia wood, kesh, a, a wood mm. oil for the light, and spices for the anointing oil, and for the sweet essence, on our stone, mm -hmm. and stone to be set in the effort and in the breastplate and let them make me a sanctuary mm -hmm. purpose of this mm -hmm. make me a sanctuary that i may dwell among them mm -hmm. according to all mm -hmm. according to all that i should i show you that is the mm -hmm. pattern mm -hmm. of the tabernacle and the pattern of all its furnishings just so you shall make it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we can see we're talking about Jesus, our offering. Mm. And there's a question there. Should a child of God be asked to give an okay. offering today? And we can see here now in Exodus, the very, very first time that mm. the Lord God asked of the children of God, mm. uh, ask for an offering. Mm. And we see there clearly that there was a purpose for this request. Mm. And if we read further, there's a place where they brought enough that yeah. the Lord God said, tell their people to stop. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Like Apostle Joseph was saying a minute ago, he never asked for the currency at that time mm. that was being used, that was mm -hmm. being spent to be part of the offering. He requested for gold for mm. a reason. Mm. He requested for silver for mm. a reason because they needed that in the temple. So everything that he requested for, the oil, for the light, mm. everything has a reason, a function. And he says the reason for all this so they can build a sanctuary. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Build a sanctuary that he may dwell Among. amongst them. So the purpose is for our closeness mm. with God, mm. for us to get closer to God. Today, a lot of people will get excited when we've given mm. for a project in, in church, when we've given for the building of the temple, in, in building of uh, the church building. We feel excited thinking that we've done something remarkable mm. for God. But God wants to build his temple and who is the temple of God today? The Bible says you are the temple of God. So he wants you to build you. Mm. He wants me to build me. Mm. So we are being built up. So spiritual we're not houses. yeah, mm. spiritual houses. We are being built up. So anything that will get you excited is when you know that, oh, I've actually fed myself very well today mm. in the things of the Spirit, Amen. be excited. Amen. Or you feel like you, you you fellowship, you've had this time in, in the presence of oh, God, and you mm. feel like, oh, what a revelation he has shown mm. me. I'm, I'm studying, oh, you know, just, be, be, you know, because he wants you built up the temple of God of which you and I, we are. Amen. Man. Man. It's quite incredible that, you know, we always keep going, coming back to this point mm. that when you understand the doctrine of Christ, mm. it becomes forthcoming mm. in you, you know, embracing what the Lord Jesus has done for you. Mm. 
Because the plan of God is clear. It's meant to be clear for us to understand what mm. we've been brought into. Mm. That's the idea behind it. The Lord's not to keep secret from us. We're his friends now. Amen. Yeah? So he tells us what he's doing. Mm. He tells us what he has done. He wants us to understand. That's why he sat Cleopas and his other, other disciples to teach them, to expound mm. the word to them about himself. So you need, God, you need to understand this really well. Mm. Because he says, you shall know the truth, mm. and the, the truth shall, shall set, set you free. free. Why? Because he's purchased that freedom mm. for you. He doesn't want anybody to take that, that, that freedom from you, because the only way that freedom is compromised when you don't have access to the truth of the word of God. Yeah. In understanding what Christ has done for you, that's what the truth is. So when God's people are being asked to give an offering today, nobody tells them what offering they are giving. Mm -hmm. Is it a sin offering? Is it a burnt offering? A peace offering? Is it a drink offering? What offering is it mm. that you are, you've been asked to give? It is within your right to ask the person was demanding that from you. Because the Lord God has not sent anyone to come and represent him in the collection of offerings. Mm. There is no such indication in the counsel of the Lord. The only person that was sent is Christ Jesus. Mm. But he was the offering. Sacrifice the offerings that I have not, that I have not desired, mm. but a body prepared. Whose body is the body of the Lord Jesus Christ? So we'll show in the further discussion that we're going to have about God's grace, Amen. how the Lord Jesus Christ meets every single offering you know, indicated or required under the old covenant. Mm. Because the old covenant is a copy of the new. The new is the original. Amen. So everything that is in the Old Covenant is a copy. That's why the Lord emphasizes to Moses here, so make sure that you follow the pattern. Do not deviate from what I showed you. Mm. The materials has to be those materials. The measurement has to be exact. The design has to be exact. Mm -hmm. Just as I showed you, that's how I want it to be on earth. As we know, his will must be performed on earth mm -hmm. as it is in heaven, is in, in heaven. every area. You can see the clarity of the scripture coming to you when you realize mm -hmm. that, that this God that we serve is methodical, is intentional. Mm -hmm. He declares the end from the beginning. Mm -hmm. There are no surprises as far as God is concerned. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Um, I would like us to stop here mm. and to be continued. Amen. Yeah, to be continued. Jesus, our offering. offering. Jesus is our offering. offering. Is your offering? Is the offering ultimate offering? offering. We cannot do anything else. No. <laughs> and that question: Should a child of God be asked Ask to give an offering? offering. When so they if, Christ Jesus yes. as so, their offering. Okay. So if Jesus has become your offering, should you be asked to give mm -hmm. an offering? Because the offering that was uh, we asked, because we're going to go into much detail yes. as the question is indicated, it is the Lord God demanding it. It says, mm. my offering. My offering. Yeah. These are the items I'm asking mm. for. And these are the purpose for the, those, those items being asked. And the Lord is so... Mm awesome you know even when he said he said even if someone is not willing don't take, don't take my me. offering don't and and then i'm not i'm not i'm not angry i'm not angry no, he no, said no. i will be angry because, oh, I'll because punish the person no, 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 no. or it's, it's not from a willing heart yeah. someone who's willing take my offering yeah. if they're not willing yes right. let them keep let it. them and he didn't say i'm gonna be angry those people they will see my rot or yeah. something no no and what I've been doing in church. Oh, don't give mm -hmm. an offering though. Look at you without yeah. the you you be lambasted, you'll be talked about, you be, you know. <laughs> they'll do everything possible to make you feel guilty. 
But that's even under the context of ignorance. Mm. Right? We're not we're not supporting the idea. This is what we're trying to, to yeah. generate to the you know the attention to yeah. is that Christ has done everything so that we have nothing to do mm. except what we have already done in responding to receiving him because he has paid the price on our yes. behalf. So yeah. we have come to, to the Father through him. Yeah, we have accepted the gospel. That's all that is required of us. When we're in the kingdom of God, is to be trying to be taught the doctrine of Christ, to perform the works that would have been revealed unto us by the Holy Spirit mm. because of that calling mm. that he has now given unto us mm. as being partakers of God's divine, divine nature, as being in the kingdom of God, yeah. as being in the body of Christ, supplying as a member of the body of Christ, supplying whatever has been given unto us to supply mm. for the, the benefit of that body entirely. Okay. Yeah. But the offerings, if Christ is our offering, why do I need to give an offering to the, to the Father? On what ground? Because he'll be asking, why are you giving me this? I didn't ask for you. I need to ask for it. I asked you for a perfect offering. Christ Jesus is that perfect offering. That's why the Lord God had to send Christ Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave mm. his only begotten son. So when we accept Christ Jesus and the work that he performed, it means that we are directly paying the Father based on his requirement, based on the requirement of his laws. We are paying him. If you look at chapter 13 and 14 of the book of Exodus, you'll see what the Lord God did. The gold that he was asking for, mm. the items he was asking for, the children of Israel had received them before mm. in Egypt. He gave them favor with their neighbors. Mm. The Bible said, well, they planted the Egyptians. Hallelujah. They left with so much possessions. Out of the same possession was the Lord asking for an offering, a free will offering. Christ Jesus gave himself freely, willingly. He said, not my will, but yours. Yes. He's a free will offering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We'll, we'll, look at, we'll look at this in more detail. Amen. You to know, be it's continued. quite exciting. To be continued. Quite exciting. Be, you know, to be really. continued. Because quite you'll exciting. be thinking, so should we give at all? Should we give at all to be continued? Mm -hmm. Join us next Sunday where we by talk God's about grace, this, yeah. by God's grace. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and at some point, you will see where the giving comes, comes in, in and what kind of giving, giving. we are meant to do. to do. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So stay blessed. Father, we thank you Amen. for yes. your word, yes, Lord. for your you. spirit, for teaching us, for giving us, um, opening our eyes to understand your internal purpose, that even as your people, O oh God, we share this with us, O oh God that you open their eyes to know the reason why they should be doing the things they are doing in the name of Jesus Christ. We bless your name, O oh Father. We thank you for everything you've done in our lives. Glory to your name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the, Lord. Praise the Lord. So bye for now and see you next time. Amen. Amen. Stay blessed. Stay blessed. And have a wonderful season. Mm -hmm. Yes. Merry Christmas, Christmas in advance. In advance. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Amen.